Hi there, welcome to Scrap and Coffee. So today I'm here with a project share for the gift. The tutorials are on my channel already and I'm here to show you the final product. So for the paper collection that I've used, I've used this paper pack. It's, I've got it in my stash for quite a while now. So I don't know if it's still available. I got it at Michael's, I think, over a year ago. So this is the Mombi Sheets. And it's called, yeah, good question. I'm not sure the name of this paper bag, but uh, I've already made several uh, smaller projects with it. So I was kind of limited in papers that I was able to choose, but that's okay. Uh, I still have enough in there to make more projects. So this uh, box, it's, I think it was six and a half by eight and a half. Yes, six and a half by eight and a half. And it's uh, the combination of a box and a folio. So I've made this as my closure here uh, with some ribbon. And that can go, that can open like this. So the attachment of this is not in the cutting guide, but I, by the end of the video, I will try to explain what I did with the pieces that were not in the tutorial. So here on the on the top, I've just attached a photo mat just to because this paper was pretty plain and I just wanted to do a little bit extra. So I have here a photo mat for six by four photos that you can open up, and on the front I did a three by three photo with a embellishment. I didn't have any embellishments in this uh, paper collection, so but this I had in my stash, so I backed that with some black cardstock on there. Just to make it a little bit more alive here on the front. So just a plain photo mat on the outside I've decorated as well. And I haven't decorated the back yet. I kind of forgot. But that's okay for now. I will do it later. So I can open this. And then this part, top part, is the folio part. And on this side I have a box. So you can... You can place more photos in there or you can place a little gift in there if you want to give it away or something that you want to keepsake. Uh, yeah, there are several reasons that you can use it. I was thinking about using this project and I'm probably with a different paper um, for my children's uh, like a first month or maybe even a first week book after they were born. Because for example, I still have the clothes that my daughter wore on her first days. The, really small tiny tiny dresses and I think I can keep that in here because now they're just laying in a box in a closet and I think that's a waste so I might keep that in here and then use the folio from for pictures from the first week or the first month so I thought that would be fun and this I've made a by using the bread and a little bit of the ribbon that I've also used on the outside you can pull on this box and it will slit open and you can place something in there so it's a pretty tight fit, I will admit that, but it works. So here the folio part. Again, I can open this up one more time. And again, this closure here and the booklet that's in there missed in the tutorial. But I will try to explain as good as I can what I did. It's pretty, pretty easy. So, uh, But again, it's a pretty tight fit. So you might want to uh, think about reducing one layer of, the, of this little booklet here. I've made it three layers, but... Uh, this is the closure and again on the end I will try to tell you what I did there. So this is a pouch pocket with that closure. And this booklet will fit in here and this is actually the back. Uh, but I've matted that with this paper. And on the front and here I went a little bit wrong. I was kind of distracted. Uh, someone was talking to me when I was attaching it and it's a little bit off. But okay that's not a big deal. Um... But I've got this with a circle die out of one of the papers in the collection. I backed that with some black cardstock. And that's my closure for this booklet. So I can open this. And then I have some room for photos here. And I can open it again and there is more room for photos. So I've made this three layers. Like one, two, three pieces. But you might want to leave this one out to reduce the bulk a little bit. But that's up to you. It's quite bulky but that's okay to me. I'll just leave it out for later. Uh, so we open it up. Now here I have a page that you can just flip like this. But it's a trifold page. So I can open it here. 
room for photos and I kept matting really plain and simple. Like I said, I didn't have any embellishments actually. And it's a trifle so I can open it again. And this is the other side, just photo area that I've created there. And here you can place a little photo or do some journaling. So just pretty plain, but I use the magnet here to keep it all in place so you can open it up like that and like that and like that over or as the whole piece. And then finally on the inside there is a small waterfall here. I've used a closure with a magnet. Again just some plain matting. I uh, just kept it really simple and I created photo opportunity here. So you, you can also place a 6x4 there, but you can also break that up. So my photo mats, <laughs> these one are cut down so you have a nice uh, border in between, but this one I didn't cut down so it's there's a little bit of difference there, but all of that is removable so that's not a problem. So just a simple waterfall there. And here I've created a tuck space or a pocket with the pattern paper so it's not you don't have as much room as an actual pocket but you can still put something in there so I did two photos in there and that's like the maximum so you don't stress your paper too much so a six by, six by four will fit in there as well in the portrait direction so the folio will hold about 20 photos and maybe 25 if you use more of these opportunities, but about 20 photos. Just a small folio for some fun photos. So uh, what I didn't show you in the tutorial because I had some technical difficulties is this closure here. So uh, what I did, this piece, it's in the cutting guide of course, it's 3 inches by I believe 7 inches and I've scored this here at four inches so this is four inches i've scored it and what i did is after i've made my booklet i've placed the booklet in here and then i've hold this piece where i had a little bit of space between the end of the booklet and the fold not too much because you don't want to stick it out have it sticking out too much here as well so keep that in mind but you want it to fold over nicely so i've just hold it in place and then here I've marked where it was going to go and I've placed my double sided tape on the rest of the flap there and stuck that down. By using the same technique, just holding it in place with the booklet in there, make sure that I had enough overlapping here and then just stick it down there. And then I've made it on top of that. And for the booklet, what I did is like I showed you before, it's three pieces. They are in the cutting guide, of course. So the middle piece is the piece that has no score lines then you have one larger piece with a score line here so you will fold on the score line place your tape on the dented side no i'm sorry place your tape on the bumpy side for that piece and attach it on the back side and by attaching it on the back so you will place it on top of there make sure you're still able to see your score line when you fold it over you have a teeny tiny bit of space here um, that gives you the space to place this flap if you want it so and it folds over nicely so this flap also one score line and here goes the tape on the dented side and I've attach, attached it on top of it now yeah, you could also attach that on the back side as well that would be fine as well of course so that comes together really quick and easy really simple and for the closures on the outside, again, those flaps were three inches thick and I believe about seven inches uh, long. And I've made a score line here at three and three quarters. But you will see there is not a lot of overlapping, but for me that was enough. Just a tiny bit of overlapping. I don't know how well you can see that with the light. Um, so if you want to have a little bit more overlapping, you can score uh, for example at four inches but i did it at three and three quarters and here i scored it at one and three quarters so you have enough height to fold over the box and then what's uh, whatever is left i've attached on the back side and now it's a good thing that i haven't matted that because you can see it so i had quite the space left here to attach that there so i just used my double-sided tape 
and attach the net, try to center it uh, from top to bottom. And here I've used an eyelid. Um, here um, I just covered it on the back side because I've used it to keep the ribbon in place. And here the eyelid just goes through and it's visible there. It's not the best eyelid, but so you can stick your ribbon through here. Just pull it through, try to get it tight and I'm not the best uh, bow, bow maker, how do you call this? Um, but it's closed, just like that, so no magnet here. So that's the, that's the project, I think it's a pretty fun project, just for some small photos, a gift in there or something you want to keepsake. It's pretty fun to make, pretty easy to make. Um, yeah, with a great result. So I hope you enjoy it. And I want to thank you for watching. Enjoy the rest of your day.